Hello and welcome back to Through the Trap Door. I'm Katie. And I'm Emily. And this is our podcast where we read you Harry Potter fan fiction. And get attacked by dogs. Yep. That's what happens every week. I don't know what you want from me. Oh, she wants to lay down. Oh, all right. Well, if you're going to lay down, that you can stay right there. Yeah. We have a ton of listeners in like a whole bunch of new countries. Someone leave us a review. Please. Or like tweet at us or... Send us a message on Facebook. Just say hello. So we know you're listening. All right, we're on to the second chapter of the story. Uh, We did not really anticipate how long the story was going to be, but we started reading it. So y'all are going to be with us for the long haul through this. Yep. Uh, So have fun. Yeah, because it's like 20 chapters, which is what we usually do. Right. But... Each of the chapters are like 17 plus pages printed out. print them out, which is what we try to do. It's just easier for us to read them to you. Uh, And yeah, it's very long, so you're probably going to get like 40 episodes worth out of this one story. Right. Hopefully it's good. (laughs) Well, you'll be on this journey with us. If it's not... We're sorry. (laughs) But we're now committed. We've, yep. we've released two episodes. No going back now. Nope. Absolutely not. Ready? Yeah. All right. Chapter two. The box. He had no idea, Melody said, clutching her stomach, laughing hysterically. Lily smiled rather half-heartedly, disappointed that she'd missed seeing the effects of her charm And also still angry with James for what had happened at breakfast. I honest to goodness don't remember what happened at breakfast. I don't remember what happened at breakfast either. I know we ranted about bagels. We did rant about bagels. Because they probably mentioned something about toast. Probably not. We were probably just started talking about toast. (laughs) After pouring the pitcher of pumpkin juice down the front of James's robes, she had stormed out of the great hall so angry that splotches began appearing in front of her eyes, clouding her vision. Upon re-entering her dormitory, Lily found herself wondering why she'd gotten so mad in the first place. It hadn't even been that big of a deal, really, what James said, but James... Lily always seemed to lose herself. Whenever she was around James, all her control, her manners, her normal dur- docile personality, docile, docile, <laughs> docile personality, and her common sense flitted away like a golden snitch whenever she saw him, and she hated him for it. That was a lovely analogy. It really was. It's too bad you missed it, Melody howled. His thoughts were broadcasted like a radio program, and there was a big purple bubble over his head spelling out his thoughts like muggle funnies, and he had absolutely no idea. That is a fun charm. Yeah, it is. It's mean. But fun. But fun. Madame Pence, who had just come back from delivering Dumbledore a book, heard Melody's laughter immediately. She walked over and looked sternly at Melody. Get quiet or get out, she snapped. I don't feel like she would give her that option. She would just tell her to get out. Yep. I do believe she would just say, goodbye. Mm Mm-hmm. Sorry, Melody said much quieter and got up to leave. I'll talk to you later, she said to Lily and left the library still laughing. After Lily had retreated up to her dorm, she realized she had a history of magic essay she still needed to finish. And she only had one inch left, and so far she hadn't been able to come up with any more information on on the wizard pirate raids of Ireland in 1582. There were pirate raids? Cool! There were wizard pirates? Also cool! What would a wizard pirate look like? I feel like it would look like a regular wizard or a regular pirate who could just do magic. But his ship would be cooler. Well, yes. Because magic. Because magic. I feel like all I can picture in my mind as a wizard pirate is um, Davy Jones from the, what, second Pirates of the Caribbean movie with Mm -hmm. his octopus beard? Yes. 
Or like Ghost Pirate Man from the yep. last one. Yep. Alright. At least we're on the same page about wizard pirates, even though both <laughs> of those are ghost pirates. It's fine. It's fine. Unless she was going to write a very long closing paragraph in big, loopy writing to... An inch isn't that long that she would have to fill. No, it's really not. It's like two sentences. Yeah, it's like maybe three or four. I know. That was the thing. Whenever they're like, 12 inches of parchment on... And I'm like, that is one page. They want you to write one page. One page would take me like... Maybe an hour or two to write. Seriously! And, like, that's typed on a piece of paper using, you know, standard fonting. Right! If I was handwriting it, one page typed out for me is like. Like that. Like three pages handwritten. Yeah, at least. So, I'm sorry. One page is fine. For eighth grade science fair, I wrote like eight pages on apples, typed! Apples! Yeah. Yep. There's not much to write about apples, but I got eight pages worth. Got an A plus on that project. Pretty happy about myself. (laughs) Unless she was going to write a very long closing paragraph in big loopy writing to reiterate several facts she'd already mentioned, it looked like she was going to be stuck in this library forever. Also, as like, you know, good essay writing formatting you should have a conclusion paragraph that wraps up all the points you made right i was gonna say isn't that the point of a conclusion to wrap up all of the points you made throughout the entire paper apparently we are very passionate about essay writing (laughs) i was unaware (laughs) unaware of our essay writing passion because i legitimately hated them in school well yeah Me too. But I retained a lot of information, apparently. Useless information. Because I'm never, ever going to write an essay again. Can't remember how to, you know, use my letter writing format, but... No. Can write you an essay. Apparently. Huh. Well, I guess when we eventually have children in school who are writing essays, we'll have a lot of passion behind it. Yes. We'll be very good at it. (laughs) We'll be great assets. (laughs) However, at that moment, the last person in the world she wanted to see strolled in, James Potter. He wasn't carrying any books with him, and Lily was immediately suspicious. As you should be. I mean, I would be. You're in the library without any books, unless you're going to check out some books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You at least walk in with a book bag. Yeah. She hoped he wasn't coming to talk to her. Her suspicions were confirmed when he spotted her and started walking over. She groaned inwardly and began to pack up her things. She was nearly done shoving her supplies back in her backpack when James sat down across from her. Hi, he said. He sounded normal, not cocky or angry or taunting or anything like the James she knew at all. She looked up, a tired expression on her face and was surprised to see his face looked rather guilty. Hi, she said, and finished putting her quill and ink bottle in her pack. She slung it over her shoulders and gathered up the books she intended to borrow from the library. Getting up from her chair, James stood with her. I wanted to talk to you, he said. So talk, Lily said simply, walking up to Madame Pince's desk with her books. I'm sorry about this morning, he said, as Madame Pince filled out the cards in the front of the book. Why are they not magic books? Like, I don't know, more like the Amazon shopping system? I know, seriously, you just walk out, ping, done. Yep. I know, this is really cheap. But this person clearly is in middle school. With the cards and yeah. the books, yeah. I'm going to say, why? Oh, wait, the cards and the books, yeah. Because they don't do that at, like, libraries. No, they're the scanny barcode now. And, like, in college and high school, they were the scanny barcode. Yep. And it was, like, attached to your student ID card. But 
this, you wrote out the thing, and then they will stamp it. Mm-hmm. And, oh, my goodness, this person's in middle school. Or, like, a school without any any tech at all. Could Low techy techy. Yeah. For what? You were the one who got pumpkin juice poured down your front, Lily reminded him, taking the books back from Madame Pince and thanking her. They walked out of the library side by side. Yeah, that's true, but I think I deserved it. Oh, really? Lily said, a smile playing on her lips. Yeah, I was being a git. What, are you asking me to forgive you? Lily said, laughing. James looked at her, giving a lopsided smile that for some odd reason made her blush. Cause you love him. (laughs) She looked away and hugging her books tightly to her chest. Of course not, James said. I just thought I'd let you know that I would have done the same thing myself. Bye! He gave her a cocky grin and strolled off, whistling to himself. I did not make that cocky. I made it's that fine. nervous and Panicky. childlike, but it's fine. <laughs> uh, whistling to himself. Lily stared after him, blinking. Did that just happen? She asked to the thin air. I believe it did, said a voice, and Lily jumped and turned to see the gray lady, Ravenclaw's ghost, hovering in the hall behind her. Lily smiled. Hey, lady, Lily said, using the nickname she had given to the ghost in her first year. They had become something of friends in the last five years, and as lady was now over 600 years dead, she always had good advice. So... Are they just trying to play on the relationship that Harry has with Sir Nicholas de Mimsey Porpington III? Probably. I know his full name, but I couldn't remember Helena Ravenclaw. I don't see what the issue is. (laughs) (laughs) Helena's a very difficult name. (laughs) Sir Nicholas de Mimsey Porpington III! I remember. (laughs) I know. But (laughs) Helena, which is almost my grandmother's name, I could not remember. (laughs) I'm terrible. Also, it's not like we don't have access to all of the books right there. I know. Or Google. Thank God I'm going to start a reread in January. So, who is he? Lady asked. Lily sighed and leaned back against the wall, hugging her books to her chest. A git, she replied. Just like he said. Are you sure? Lady asked. He seemed very nice to me, just a little shy. Shy? Lily sputtered. Please! That guy has an ego big enough to fit two World Cup stadiums. That as it may be, don't you see he was trying to apologize for being a... A what did you call him? A git, Lily surprised. Yeah, surprised? <laughs> surprised. Lily supplied. Yes, a git. He was trying to apologize, but at the last minute, he lost his nerve. Lily snorted. Please, if I ever see James Potter apologize for anything, I'd die of shock. Lady just shrugged. He does seem proud, but he likes you, and he is rather handsome. Lily rolled her eyes. So they say... She said, but I personally don't see what's so great about him, says the girl who just blushed when he smiled at her. Mm Mm-hmm. She's just not admitting to the fact that she likes him. Mm Mm-hmm. By this time, the great lady had a knowing smile on her face. All right, Lily Flower, she said gently. You should probably continue studying. Lily nodded, bid her goodbye, and left. All right. Now, change in perspective. And it looks like a slightly different time. We might have gone back just a touch in time. Chicken! James reprimanded himself. You are never going to make any progress if you can't at least be nice to the girl. So, how'd it go? Serious ass. Bouncing out of a secret passageway on James's left and spotting him immediately. I must be possessed. 
<laughs> I must be possessed, James said. Every time I get near her, I act like a complete git. Well, maybe you are a complete git, Sirius said. James just glared at him. No, not growled. Glared. 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 <laughs> You're not helping! Sorry, Sirius shrugged. Maybe you should send her flowers or something. Girls like that. James laughed sharply. Yeah, right. She'd think I was psycho. Besides... I don't think I like her that much anyways. Sirius shrugged again. Whatever, but you better be sure because someone else is gonna snag her if you don't. Oh, I'm sure, James said. I don't give a damn about what happens to Lily Evans. Who do you think I should ask out first? Mimi asked, flopping down on her bed, which was right next to Lily's. Lily looked up from her copy of Witch Weekly at her. Out of who? James, Remus, and Sirius, silly. Oh, them, Lily said, rolling her eyes. I don't know. Oh, come on, Mimi whined. You've been hanging out with them for almost every day for like three weeks. Give me some advice. Fine then, James, Lily said. Yeah, he is pretty cute, Mimi said, eyes dancing. Lily snorted. That's not why I picked him she said. Then why did you? Because he's the biggest jerk and you'll be able to get him out of the way first. Mimi shot Lily an annoyed look. What? Lily said defensively. Mimi just rolled her eyes. After a few minutes of silence, with Mimi filing her nails and flipping through and Lily flipping through her magazine, Mimi gasped. What? Lily asked. You don't like him, do you? Mimi asked. No, don't be ridiculous, Lily said, her pink, her cheeks turning pink at the mention of it. Her pink's turning cheek at the mm -hmm. mention of it. That's what yep. I was going to say. <laughs> and I got myself. <laughs> you do, don't you, Mimi said, her eyes widening in shock. Oh my God, I can't believe it. I was about to go after the guy my best friend has a crush on. I feel so stupid. I don't have a crush on him, Lily insisted, throwing a pillow at Mimi, her flaming red cheeks not at all helping her case. Mimi couldn't respond. She was laughing too hard at her best friend's face. Yeah, well, Fair. I guess that is what, like, you do at, like, 15. I do not like him. Stop! Throws yep. pillow at friend. Yes. Well, clearly turning bright red because you clearly like them. True. Another change in perspective. That's what I've learned these dashes have meant for us. Yes. It can get a bit confusing. Sorry, y'all. Lily, I need to talk to you. Lily turned as she exited study of ancient runes about a week later to see Remus Lupin jogging after her. What's up? She asked as he caught up to her. We need your help. We? Who's we? Lily asked, not sure she wanted to know. Well, at the same time, sure, she already knew who he was talking about. <laughs> Me, James, Sirius, Peter, and Melody. Lily groaned. What's wrong? You sound like Thorne just assigned you a 40-inch essay on the importance of every chopped potion ingredient or something. A 40-inch essay would be terrible. Yes. Absolutely terrible. I mean, still, that's like... Three and a half, four pages. Yeah, but on evenly chopped potion ingredients, could you write 40 inches on that? No. Exactly. That would be better than spending 40 seconds in the same room as James, Lily said. You try so hard to dislike him, it hurts to watch, Remus said, shaking his head. Who's trying? Lily shot back. Touchy. Lily smiled and took this moment to give him a once-over. Mimi was right. He was rather cute. But he had pale skin and heavy bags under his eyes as though he hadn't slept for weeks. Which, Lily reminded herself, considering his crazy friends, he probably happened. So, will you help us? Remus asked. 
Depends, Lily said, coming to a stop in front of the Transfiguration classroom, where she had to go next. What do you want me to do? None of us really understand what that new charms professor Flitwick has been trying to teach us, you know, that teleportation charm, and we wanted some help. Lily rolled her eyes. You all do realize, don't you, that I don't really like charms that much. Yes, we know you like potions, but so what? Remus shrugged. You're good at them, so will you help us? Lily sighed. I suppose, she said, and Remus smiled. Be at MHQ tomorrow at the end of class, and we can spend the afternoon on it. What's the password, Lily said. You haven't changed it, have you? Oh, yeah, that's right. We changed it. So what is it? Flowers are annoying. Bye! <laughs> like how he just runs away, basically. <laughs> Lily looked after him as he walked away, mouth open in shock. Flowers are annoying? What? Was that in any way directed at her? If it was, Lily would have bet a million galleons that it was James who had come up with that password. A change in perspective. Or is this a passage of time? I think this one's a passage of time. Okay, a passage of time. It was nearing the end of November, and as such was getting closer to Christmas, Lily needed to start thinking about Christmas presents. It's the end of November, and you're just now thinking about Christmas presents? I'm almost done. I've got my list of what I need to purchase. I just haven't started purchasing yet. Yeah, which is acceptable. Yeah. Lily needed to start thinking about Christmas presents. She would, of course, get presents for her parents, her older sister Petunia, her younger sister Daisy, her younger brother Dean. Is she the only wizard? It doesn't say. She would then buy for her friends at school. Melody, Mimi, Susie, and Matt were the first ones on her list. Lily considered whether or not she should buy presents for the Marauders, After many minutes of thought that led her around in circles, she decided to buy presents for Remus, Sirius, Peter, and James. She'd have to get something really stupid for James, but not too stupid, since it, after all, was Christmas. Then there was the other thing about Christmas. Where was she going to stay? Gonna go home? I don't know. I'd go home. Mm Mm-hmm. Me too. You clearly don't like these people very much. She does. She's just pretending not to. I know, but I would still probably go home. You're well, Michael yeah. Bourne. Go home. Would she stay at Hogwarts like she had last year, or would her parents want her to come home? She had rather liked the Christmas at school last year, but then there was nothing like a good Christmas at home. However... Christmases at home had been rather awkward ever since Lily had started attending Hogwarts. Petunia and Daisy had gotten rather cold with her. Though Daisy wasn't quite as bad as Petunia, Lily wasn't especially looking forward to seeing her sisters. However, there was always her parents and her dear old brother Dean. They were just the same as ever. Dan was always interested in Hogwarts and constantly asking her questions about it. Her parents were ever so proud of her, too, and she did miss them over the year at school. This is something that bothers me, and not the the pretend siblings. What the flip happened to Lily and Petunia's parents? Yeah, they never, like, tell you what happened to their parents. Because, I'm sorry, Lily and James were... 21, which means at most Petunia was probably, what, 25? Mm-hmm. When, when Lily died, and at that point, she had no parents. Yeah, so what happened to both of their parents? Because, like, even if their parents had them, like, when they were older, like, they still... Wizards! Wizards lived to be in their, like, late hundreds! Well, her parents aren't wizards. I know, but then what happened to James's parents? Well, I think James's parents, they actually described a little bit of, like, they had him much, much later in life than normal. And then I think 
At least one of them died of dragon pox. Yeah. But... But, like, they all died within a year or two of each other? That's very unlikely. Like, wait, because based on canon, Lily's parents must have died while she was still attending Hogwarts. Yeah. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. Or, like, right after they graduated. Because I'm, I'm sorry. What? Because family magic for sure as shit would have worked with grandparents. Yes. So where the fuck were they? Because they, like, where? I want to know where they are. Yep. All right. Like, I kind of get that it would be one thing to be like, we want Harry to be raised in, like, a non-magical family, so he's not, like, you know, used to it, and, like, James's parents really are alive somewhere, and Harry meets them later on. But... For all four of them to be dead in a very short period of time like that. But also, like, um, Harry probably would have been, one, hella safe with wizard grandparents. Oh, two, yes. not abused. That, too. It's just a real bone of contention for me. Where are all the grandparents? Like, all of them. All of them. If I ever meet J.K. Rowling, that's what I'm going to ask her. What happened to Lily's parents? That's what I want to know. Mm -hmm. Alright. Lily, who was up in her dormitory side, she decided to write a list of all the people she was giving gifts to and what she planned to give them. Melody would, of course, be the easiest to shop for. Lily was thinking some nice jewelry or a book on of hair and makeup spells. That might do the trick, but then she could go out on a limb and buy her some nice dress robes. Melody's family was rather poor, and she adored nice things. She'd find something for her in Hogsmeade next weekend. She was sure of it. Mimi always appreciated jewelry and makeup, but most of hers was of the muggle variety since she was muggle-born. Lily decided she could find some magical makeup for her. Ooh. Do you think magical makeup applies itself? That would be awesome. Or, like, you can't make a mistake. Like, it always just goes on perfectly. And then it doesn't smudge until you take it off. Yep. And the lipstick stays in place without making you dry, crusty lips. Yes. That would be amazing. Until you literally have to take it off. Probably with, like, a makeup removal spell. Mm Mm-hmm. But it just is, like, it just becomes... What your face looks like. Yes. Oh, that'd be amazing. Uh, magical makeup. Matt was rather loud, and he had a rather odd obsession with socks. He always cut his robes off at the bottom so people could see his unique socks. Lily had seen some quite interesting socks in Hogsmeade last weekend and thought several magical pairs would keep him occupied for a while. Uh, I want magical socks. I just want magical everything. I just want magic. Magic would be amazing. Susie was kind of like Lily, quiet, reserved, and rather studious. She would appreciate a book of some sort. Lily's parents would appreciate anything magical she gave them. Same went for Dean. She probably, she would probably get them some candies or joke products. Petunia and Daisy would appreciate something that looked as non-magical as possible. They were the easy ones. That You put way too much thought into that. Yes. But also very thoughtful. Those were the easy ones. Now came the hard part. What in the world could she come up with for the other four marauders? Lily figured they'd already have every joke product invented and probably had some that they invented themselves. She wondered briefly if Zonko's or Honeyduke sold any gift certificates like some muggle stores and made a mental note to check. If not, Sirius looked like the kind of person who valued hair gel, but she figured He'd already had a supply. Lily laughed as a brief image of Sirius in a leather jacket flashed across her mind. But a leather jacket would be an impossibility. First of all, they were way too expensive. Second, she figured next he'd want a motorcycle to go with it. 
First of all, a leather jacket's not that expensive. Yeah, it's really not. Like, if you're buying all these gifts. Yeah. Like, I mean, I know that she's, like, you know, magic and all that. But if you just go to the, like, store Wilton's that's in, like, every outlet ever. You can get a really nice leather jacket under 200 bucks. Yeah. I actually need a new leather jacket. Maybe I should go to Wilson's. I look every time I go, and then I never find one that I like enough to actually buy. Same. I'm just, I st- uh, I'm just very particular about it. I know. I really want it to look a very certain way. Yep. I have, like, a mental yep. image of what I want it to look like. And you just can't find it. Yep. I hate that. Yep. Especially when you, like, see it on someone else, and you're like, where did you get that? And then they don't remember. And you're like, why don't you remember? <laughs> Please, always remember. <laughs> I need to know. Peter, well, Peter was nice enough. He just needed to be a little bit more secure in his own right and stop trying to be like someone else, like Sirius or Remus or James. She thought of maybe getting him some magical stress balls that magically soothed and lifted your mood. I need that. Me too. Remus was probably the nicest of them all and the most serious at at that. He might like something more practical, She figured a visit to the bookstore would sort everything out. And then there was James. James, well, James. There were no words to describe James. Maybe she could just get him a box. Lily giggled at the thought of James opening his unusually light Christmas present from her only to find a very fancy, very empty box. She immediately felt guilty and wiped the thought away. She couldn't give a gift. <laughs> she couldn't give a gift that mean to anybody. I think that's hilarious. Yeah, it's a great present. That is so funny. <laughs> a very fancy, very empty box. That's great. I want to do that now. <laughs> but still, She had to admit to herself, it would be funny. It would. It'd be real funny. He'd probably appreciate it, too. Yeah. A passage of time. Lily reread the letter for the fifth time, then sat it down and leaned back against her headboard, groaning. A school owl had just delivered a letter from her parents. Dear Lily, it read, We hope you're having fun at school. You better not be getting in too much trouble. This James fellow you've been writing about does seem rather teasing, but he is only a 15-year-old boy. We've decided that it's your choice whether you'd like to come home for Christmas or stay at Hogwarts this year. We'd all like for you to come home, but if you don't want to, we understand. Alice back. Love, Mom and Dad. She reread the sentence. We'd all love for you to come home. But if you don't want to, we understand. Several more times before folding the letter up and putting it away, she groaned again and covered her face with her hand. That sentence felt like a weight on her chest. We'd all love for you to come home, but if you don't want to, if I don't want to, if you don't want to? How was she supposed to make a decision like that? It should have been easy, but it wasn't. If she chose to stay at Hogwarts, she would disappoint her parents. If she chose to go home, she'd have to face her two sisters and disappoint her best friend. Melanie always stayed over Christmas holiday at Hogwarts. She said Christmas at home was too depressing. Lily rubbed her eyes, which were beginning to feel heavy. It was late and she needed sleep. Burrowing down under her covers, Lily became oblivious to the world around her. She was oblivious to the crickets chirping outside, the spider crawling on the ceiling outside her bed, Mimi snores in the next bed over, and she was oblivious to the fact that several floors above, James Potter was becoming oblivious to the exact same things, except he was becoming oblivious for a different reason. He was becoming oblivious because he was thinking about Lily. That almost seems inappropriate. Yes, it does almost seem inappropriate. (laughs) Also, invite Melody to your parents' house. Yeah. I'm sure they'd be fine. Invite Melody and then go home. 
Just send your mom and dad a letter going, hey guys, I'd love to see you, but hey, do you mind if my friend Melody comes along? Her parents are poor and she's sad about Christmas. Okay, bring her home. Okay. okay. <laughs> Good talk. See you at Christmas. Like, basically, the exact same thing happened where Ron was all like, uh, hey mom, my friend Harry gets no presents. Sends boy she doesn't know a sweater. Yeah. A passage of time. It was Friday. Lily was supposed to meet the Marauders today as soon as class was out. Flowers are annoying. She still couldn't believe the password. And she couldn't believe she was actually going to get James Potter a Christmas present. She would bet anything he wasn't planning on getting anything for her. She was on her way from potions to arithmancy when James Potter sidled up to her in the hallway. We've never had classes together, have we? He said, as though continuing a long conversation they'd been having. What? Lily asked in surprise. I mean, I've been thinking about it and wondering why I never noticed someone annoying, as annoying as you before and how it was possible that in five years we haven't had a single class together, but I don't think we have. You've been thinking? Well, that's a shock, Lily muttered. James heard her, but he ignored it. I mean, it's rather hard to believe that the Gryffindors haven't had any classes with the Ravenclaws. Well, there are Ravenclaws in my Care of Magical Creatures class, but you're not. I don't think we've had any classes together. Lily, who had been thinking during all of James's ramblings, suddenly realized that they had, in fact, that they had, in fact, had a class together. Yes, we have, she said suddenly. Flying class in our first year. You and Sirius kept trying, kept trying to dive bomb me because I wasn't such a good flyer, and my hair was a lot browner then. Oh, was that you? James said thoughtfully. Now I remember. Yeah, you were annoying. You kept whining to Madame Hooch. Professor, he's going to kill me. Professor, James imitated in a really bad falsetto tone. Lily whacked him on the shoulder and tried to keep from laughing. He was being stupid and making fun of her, and it was a really bad impression, but he was funny, unfortunately. And that's the end of this episode. All right, any final announcements or thoughts or... Uh, I don't have any right now. Do you? No. All right. I guess we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us on our journey through the trap door. Please leave us a review on Facebook or iTunes. It would literally mean the world to us. It really would. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at through the trap door 16 or on Twitter at the trap door. And please send us an email at throughthetrapdoor16 at gmail.com with any story suggestions. And as always, join us again next Saturday as we travel through the trapdoor. <laughs>